So I mentioned in yesterday's post that we were going to talk about um, uh, music education in, in terms of individual education, uh, how a person gets a musical education um, today. And I think the first thing to start with is the ideal situation, which would be that <laughs> your parents put you into music education at around the age of five and that you take to it uh, and that you... Um, that, that you that, that you have a good teacher and that you take to it as a child because as a child you learn quicker um, it, it sticks with you better uh, music is like a language uh, and and it, it everything is just going to be dead easier every time now for people who have children I'm not a parent myself so I can't tell people what to do too much about their children but one thing I can say is that it's probably a good idea to try your kid in music. Just try it. And if they totally hate it, or if if it's just not going anywhere, then fine. You know? But at least you gave it a shot. There are people who have more extreme views on this, and they feel that part of any good education for a child is some pretty rigorous music education. And I would say that, that that's probably going a little too far, but... But ideally for a musician, what the time to get educated is as early as possible. Now I started in flute lessons at 12, but I had no uh, piano experience and uh, very little experience in it with anything else until I was almost 18, which is not the optimum situation, that's not ideal. And it's a little bit, I came up with the metaphor, I always do this, I try to find something that people can relate to. It's a little bit like being an adult and learning to swim. It's intimidating, you learn slowly, uh, it's, it's just all around bad news. And uh, for me, I had to start from ground zero, uh, and then I was largely self-taught for a number of years on piano, and had to do a bunch of technique exercises over and over and over and over again. For a while, to, to, and even to this day, I have some mechanics problems on the piano. I, my, my hands don't look quite right. I mean, they're all right. It's, it's getting better, and I've, I've advanced a whole lot from when I started. But it's, it's definitely one of those things that's taken a long time. It's taken me 10 years uh, or more to really get to this stage I'm at. Um, so, you know, I've been in piano 20 years now, and uh, it's been a really tough road. So... Um, I think the thing about, for the rest of us, for those of us who didn't get major musical education at the, starting at the age of five and then, of course, take to it, uh, you know, in other words, stick with it and, and take to it, um, I, I think the first thing to think about is, is that you really need a, a teacher of some sort. And there's two major options, and in fact, um, they're both options that I've used. And the first is to find a music store that's trustworthy. There's a good music store around here, and I go there and I take lessons. And you find a music store that's trustworthy. They don't have to be a five-star perfect music store, but they've got to be trustworthy. And you ask them some questions, and you say, well, look, you know, I'd really like to play acoustic guitar songs, and I'm not necessarily interested in becoming, uh, like, you know, like... A professional musician and they're gonna say well there's so and so might be able to help you out or whatever and that's that's one thing and it's perfectly justifiable that's one way to start with music another another thing about music a uh, way to do it another thing to learn music is to go to a local community college and take basic courses to like, like really basic stuff like uh, the music appreciation courses I mentioned so that you can appreciate what you're hearing more not just in terms of playing, but what you're actually hearing. Uh, and then also, uh, you know, there's guitar classes and piano classes, and uh, you can take, sometimes you can take instrumental lessons through the departments out at these community colleges. And, you know, it's the, the idea is to get started. And if you're really, really serious about music, then you need to up the bar at some point, and you really need to think about uh, either going to music school or working with a really good professional. Um, and that's, first of all, time consuming and also costs a lot of money, it's expensive. It's, it, doesn't have to, it doesn't have to cost you $200 an hour and I'm not gonna lie to you, that's not necessary. 
but but it it, it should it there it's it's a it's a cost and it's time consuming. I find uh, talking about the psychology of things, there's also an emotional investment to doing uh, lessons and music school as well because there's just this tendency to uh, emotionally beat yourself up and to emotionally be intimidated and to just sort of need, get needy about <laughs> all your music stuff. And, uh, and, and I don't think there's anybody that's totally immune to that. Some people are probably better than others. I have a terrible time with it. Uh, so, you know, for what it's worth on that. So those would be the two things to go take some basic classes at the local community college or find a good music store, talk to them about your your needs, how much music experience you have, whether if it's totally zero, that's something they should definitely know. And, 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 and then you can get started, you can do something. The next two things that are kind of cool uh, that you can do is you can look for books that apply to your level on, on any bookseller. Amazon sells a lot of music books. Uh, so for those of us who who have signed our souls to the devil and use Amazon all the time. I'm one of those people. Uh, Amazon's a really good res resource for, for all sorts of music books. Uh, and the thing would be, is, again, to, to, to hit music books that are at your level and do a little research too. I'm not gonna go through big lists of books on in this post at least. There's some books I really like. Um, but the, the idea would be to you know do a little research and find books that are that, that apply not only to you, but also to apply to the instrument you're playing, apply to the style of music you're trying to learn, uh, books that are well written, that, that have good material in them. So this is the type of thing to think about. And then number three, which is of course controversial because I think one, it's new, and two, because there's so, much, so many problems with it, but is online resources. And the online resources are great. I mean, I don't think they're bad. I think they're awesome, it's really cool. You know, uh, there's Fender Play, uh, which is really cool for guitarists. Uh, there's Musician, which is actually fairly cheap. Uh, you know, minimal cost. If you don't want to spend anything, you can kind of just goof around with it. But then if you want to take it a little more seriously, you have to subscribe. There's other um, services that are available, uh, apps and different things. There's YouTube, which has a lot of instructional videos. Um, this this is not really intended to be a site that's going to help you, uh, you know, get that you know the you know get your instrument right or get your vocal voice right or whatever. It's not really an instructional site. This is more of a of a personal you know blog, and it's also also supposed to hit some topics and give you some ideas. So, but YouTube is an, is is definitely there. Uh, there's a community site called SoundSlice. Uh, that also uh, people use Sound Slice on their own websites as as well. So I'm not exactly sure about the entire Sound Slice site, but it's a fairly large project, and it involves taking and breaking down um, video uh, and pairing it up, syncing it with different forms of music notation like guitar tablature and standard notation and that's that type of thing. So it's pretty cool. There's there's some really good stuff out there. So yeah, I would say. Uh, those would be your three best resources you would have. First, you know, getting getting a basic instructor or getting uh, just getting into a guitar course where you have like 10 other students. Some people learn much better in groups and they're less intimidated uh, and then that might help you out. And then, uh, so, you know, those two things and then, you know, books, which are fun. I love books. See, I, I'm like, I, I always say libraries are temples. I've worked at a library before uh, and I've also just love books. In fact, I have so many books in my house right now. I have a small apartment. It's about the size of a large hotel suite or maybe like just a little bigger than that. And I've got so many books in the in the house that I'm that I'm I'm starting to starting to build a, a labyrinth and it's not not good. I really need to get rid of some stuff. Get a little minimal as that you know the the minimalist approach that people are talking about would be good for me right now. Um so book, books and then online resources. And so that gives you all three. They really hit you in all three areas and that allows you to do some things. Another thing that to think about too is, um, you know, and it's something I'm not good at, but, but getting out there and 
you know, trying to get around some people that do music in whatever way that is, going to an open mic night that's reasonable, which is hard to find, but, but may exist somewhere. Uh, and, you know, stuff like that, you know, uh, you know, getting some YouTube videos out like I'm doing here, which is one of the reasons I'm doing it. I don't get out much. Uh, and just stuff like that, you know, where you, you're going to interact with some people that are also doing music, that like music, that they're excited about it. Um, and I guess the last resource, resource I wanted to mention uh, real quick, our fourth bullet point as you, uh, to finish off would be, that, that learning about music really requires listening to music, and a streaming service is a really good idea. I mean, if you really want to play blues music, maybe you want to play like Stevie Ray Vaughan, but it would probably be a good idea to listen to some Roots Blues and, and hear what happened before the Texas Blues formed. So you go on a streaming service, and you don't have to spend a lot of money, and you look up Robert Johnson, and you look up Lead Belly, and you look up you know, field recordings, uh, Smithsonian Folkways did all these recordings of these guys that would just like hang around on their front stoop and play stuff and, you know, Blind Willie McTell and, you know, all these kind of, you know, all these characters that, that were really, you know, the, the really the stuff. I mean, it was, it's really, really good. Um, and that's, that's the kind of, that's also a, a research resource for people who are, are interested in music is streaming services. And there's a lot available for free. Once again, I will apologize to the musicians out there who aren't making any money on streaming services. But I just, uh, in the interest of, of, of hitting a wide audience and being easy on people's wallets, I'm suggesting that people go on these services and try stuff out. Just, you know, find stuff you're interested in and branch out, take notes. Um, you know, like, okay, well, this, this artist I didn't like, but, but they're connected to this other artist that, as it turns out, I do like. I mean, whatever it happens to be, like, maybe you've always listened to, like, pop country, and you want to hear Patsy Cline and Hank Williams Sr., because that's the old country stuff, you know, or whatever. So, so those are the four points. Getting some instruction looking at books, looking at online resources, and then streaming services for listening. In terms of listening homework, we used to have listening homework in music school. I don't know if well, I'd probably be at, back at it again uh, here pretty soon. So, which I guess I should go ahead. I've got enough time. I think uh, I uh, register for classes today uh, at a local community college, and I'm going to be back in music school. So I'm pretty excited about it. It's, uh, it's a good move for me. And I'm going to finally finish up, and I'm very close. I will only have to be in school probably, well, it depends, but probably just a couple of years because I've got so many credits built up, which is great. So anyway, I am signing out, but, um, you know, just some ideas for those of us who didn't get the ideal music education.